welcome to Smart. Did you hear what I just heard? I'm not sure I like the sound of that. Girls, did I miss anything? No, I think you hit most of it. Honestly, Mark, you arrive late, interrupt our introduction, drive right through the set, take most of it out, and all that without so much as an apology. <laughs> Just a normal start to the show, then. I don't believe it. Every time we're here, ready to go, and you are late. Hang on, what about the time that I was late and you're ready to start? Hold what? it right there. Oh. Thank you. I need that for my next item. It's easy to leaf through a selection of photos like these and think of them as happy snaps. Or as a reminder of a party you just rather forget. But there is a clever way of using an old photo to create a new picture. Let me show you. Now I've been to a copy shop and have taken a black and white photocopy and enlarged it of a photograph that I like of Kirsten. Now I've got a paintbrush here and a selection of colours and I'm just going to dab like paint and go straight onto this black and white photocopy. Now, the tones on Kirsten's face, I'm using as a guideline to apply the paint. So I'm using blue on the darker bits, get some red as well, like that, for a darker tone. Just add some white on the lighter bit round her cheek. Now, as you can see, I'm not using natural colours because I want to have a real abstract look to this painting. And this is just a really simple way to achieve that. Right, it's a bit of green. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't actually changed my paintbrush. Reason being is I really like the effect that is being... Look at that. That is being created... That's fantastic when I just apply the paint straight onto the paper like that. And that blue just really blends in with that white. So instead of taking time to mix it in your palette, you're just doing it straight onto the page. Right, let's go down the nose with some red. Round that eye. Now it's entirely up to you of how much of the photocopy you decide to paint. You can leave some bits in, or you can paint the whole thing. I'm going to leave Kirsten's eyes showing. And I'm going to leave her original hair as well. Just so you can see some of the contrast with that paint. Some of that green there. Now, if your brush gets clogged up, don't panic. Just get some kitchen roll and wipe it off. And then just go back to your dish. Just going to define that lower lip there with some blue. Get some more white round this nose, Kirsten's, just to give it some more definition. That's really starting to work now. And this is just a fantastic way to create an abstract painting all these bright colours. Put an eyebrow in there. Right, so I'm really pleased with that. Like, superb. But just one thing. Look what happens when you frame it off with some mount board. Now that looks like a fantastic painting to me. It really works. But why stop at that size? Why not try blowing them up to this size? You can get great detail with your brush strokes and you can cover more of an area as well. Why don't you try blowing yours up to poster size?
1900s saw a renewed interest in the arts, culture and education. It was a time of rebirth, the French word for which is renaissance. Artists were playing with perspective and rediscovering ways to paint the human form in a more realistic way. They also felt free to explore subjects that would have been frowned upon earlier. One of the most famous Renaissance artists was the Italian Sandro Botticelli. He painted many works representing biblical stories, but also felt bold enough to paint Greek and Roman gods, such as in this painting, La Primavera. Let me introduce you. That is Zephyrus, god of winds, and it's said that he transformed his love, Chloris, into Flora, goddess of flowers. Up there is the cherub Amor, who's the son of the main star, Venus, goddess of love. They are her companions, the three graces, and protecting Venus's garden, over there is Mercury, messenger of the gods. Now it's said that all of these characters featured in a classical poem about blossoming love and springtime, which perhaps explains the title, La Primavera, Italian for spring. Time for a toon tip. Monsters, cartoon monsters. How do you draw them? Well, monsters come in all shapes and sizes, quite literally. So, let's start off with a very basic shape. A triangle. Here we go. Now, how do I transform that into a monster? Very simply, just give it a pair of scary eyes, like this. Like this, and some spiky teeth. And look at that, you've got an instant triangular monster. Let's try another shape. Let's uh, go for a circle over here. Now this lends itself perfectly to a, a rather cheeky looking little devil. There we go. Give him one tooth out there and a bit of a spiky tail. Perfect. How about uh, a rectangular monster? Let's try this one down here like that. Just a rectangular box. And if you fill it in again, scary eyes like this. This time a big open mouth. Wonderful. You've got yourself a rectangular looking monster but my favorite monster of all is basically just a very simple blob which again <laughs> you whack on a pair of eyes and look at this some spiky teeth and you've got a blobby monster there you go it's all monsters made up from different types of shapes why don't you give it a go and we've got more tips next time <laughs> to tidy up, have a good clear out, but I can't throw anything away. I keep everything, bus tickets, cinema tickets, even old socks, but you never know when they might come in handy, eh? However, there is one thing I don't mind chucking out. <laughs> there you go. This might look like an old pile of junk to you, but what would you say if I told you that things like this could be made into works of art? You don't believe me? Well, I know a woman that can turn this into all this. Let's go and meet her, shall we? Julie, hello. Hi, Kirsten. Come Thanks for down. inviting us to your studio. <gasps> God, there's stuff everywhere, isn't there? Yeah, it's so a lot. Tell us about your work. Well, I make things out of paper mache using cardboard, newspaper, old paperback book paper, and then eventually like fabric and I might knit things and decorate them for my dolls. So, how would that fit in in your well, work? Well, that I found on the street, and so the top of it might get to be a hat for a person, or, or, the, or the thumb, like I might cut off the thumb and use that for a hat, but that's how it might be used. So have you always been a hoarder of stuff like this? Stop. I guess so. I mean, I love fabric and wool and old pieces of paper and just anything that I like or people give me, I'll just save and one day gets used. So is it difficult to do that kind of thing then? No, he isn't hard to make. I mean, this is the, one of the ones that is absolutely solid paper mache, like it's made sort of a bit like pass the parcel. You keep kind of putting glue on and, and then wrapping it round, but quite firmly and not too much glue or it'll take till Christmas to dry. But <laughs> Would I be able to do it? Yeah, definitely. And it's not just me, I've got some chums coming as well. Can we all do it? <laughs> OK. Brilliant, let's give it a go. <laughs> Now, 
papier-mâché can be quite messy, so make sure you choose your area you're going to work carefully and have somewhere for them to dry when they're all really gloopy. And make sure you set out all your stuff first, because as Jo's just found out, what once you get your hands in there, yeah. it's really <laughs> sticky, isn't it? The first thing you need to do, just out of quite strong cardboard, so that you can start to build your papier-mâché, or you could just use scrunched-up paper, because that's less layers to dry. And then it's just a case of layering, isn't it? Right, absolutely. So press that down, so okay. I get the paste we're using. Yeah. How have you made that? That is just um, wallpaper paste. You can also use flour and water. And then do I just dunk it in? No, you don't okay. do that. Get the strip in your piece of paper in your hand. Put your hand in the glue and just smush it around on top of the surface. You don't want masses on there, you want to get the paper nice and damp so it moulds around the shape, but not so much that it's going to take ages to dry, and then smooth it round your shape. Snoopy. Lots of layering later, our models are dry and go. ready to be decorated. Okay. Ribbons and feathers wow. and fabric. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm cutting out some eyes of this lady. Ah, just yeah. have a magazine. Perfect. Yeah. I'm cutting up Julie's gloves. <laughs> <laughs> it's for a good cause. I'm making rabbit ear marks. Oh, what every rabbit needs. <laughs> <laughs> quite good. Ah, I'm having Nicole Kidman's eyes. The great thing about this is you don't have to use really expensive art materials. We've just used newspaper and paste and then lots of bits and bobs that we found lying around in Julie's studio. And once you get going, you just can't stop, can you? It's really <laughs> addictive. We've made one each, but you could go the whole hog and make an entire family like Julie has. Here's a money-saving tip for you. If you've only got a selection of thick brushes and you'd like to do some detailed painting, the tip is just to get hold of some household scissors. And what you want to do is just cut the top of your thick brush. And you want to just keep sculpting it until you get rid of all these excess hairs in order to do some of your detailed painting. Don't panic if you think you're taking too much off, just keep sculpting it until you're happy with it. There we are, nice one, I'm happy with that. I think that's ready to do some detailed painting. And just to show you this works, I'm just going to dab it into my paint there. There's my thin line and here's a brush of the same thickness and there's a difference in the two lines. Thinner brushes at half the price. Na
in the studio for Mark's next item, I've come into costume and makeup to show you another pocket money make. And it's a way of making twisty sculptures. All you need are these garden ties or freezer bag ties. If you just get one, fold it in half and twist it with a loop at the top like that. That will be the head of your sculpture and then just keep twisting and then add to the twists as you go to build up a little bit of a body. There's one twisting there. And let's just get another one on the go because that will start to strengthen it if you keep twisting and if you keep adding eventually it will get stronger and stronger so that you have one with a little bit of a body like that which will now stand up and you can make any shape you like with that. If I just add the arms at the top you can see it starts to look like a complete person which I can then put into any position I want. There's a bit of a boogie. And the final thing to do is just pop it into some modelling clay and then onto a little stand like those cheeky fellas there. Hey, Kirst, they're really cool. Mark! Mark, come on, we're waiting for you! Hey, call it, Susan. I do know.
I take back everything I said to you earlier. That has worked really well. Yeah, it looks really good. Nice one, Mark. Oh. Well, that's all we've got time for today. But if you're into art... Stick with smart. Bye! Bye. Now, girls, I'll just get my car keys and drive you two lovely ladies home. Uh, <laughs> no need. We're going to get the bus. See ya. What? See ya. Hey, hang on a minute. I'll, I'll drive slowly, I promise. Come on. What's wrong with you? You can post your gallery pictures to Smart. PO Box 5053, London W12 6AW. And if you'd like a fact sheet, they're available on the CBBC website. thing before we go here's a fantastic way to glam up a boring old pin board just going to use some masking tape because I'm going for a striped pattern and you can just place it at different widths just get that on there now you can go for as many colors as you like but I'm just going to stick to a few colors and just brush that on there like that doesn't matter if you go over the masking tape because that's what it's there for Right, go for another colour. Now the reason we're using the masking tape is so that it gives us a nice straight edge underneath. But you don't want to pull that off just yet because we want to allow for the paint to dry. And what you're left with is something that looks like this. Really trendy way to glam up your pinball. Why don't you give it a whirl?